Good afternoon. Welcome, Avid Center fellow colleagues, students, and distinguished guests. I'm humbled at the opportunity to be amongst so many excited people, people who are excited about learning, about teaching, and about student success. When you've been a part of the Avid family for at least 15 years, the way that I have, Avid Institute is like a family reunion. You see relatives that you haven't seen in at least a year since the last institute, and then you meet relatives that you've never seen or heard of in your entire life. And then for the rest of the week, we spend hours upon hours sharing our experiences from the classroom over the last few years. So if you're new to AVID, allow me this opportunity to say welcome to the family and welcome to Summer Institute. Earlier in the year, I had a colleague say to me that he did not like the way AVID claimed to be the savior for many of our students. And I was offended by his words, particularly because he had been an AVID teacher for many years. And then it dawned on me that his experience with AVID was very different from mine as a student as well as a teacher. And his experience with AVID was very different from that of our students. And so I gave him the benefit of a doubt and I did not argue with him. Instead, I reminded him of some of the stories of our AVID students. Although AVID may not be for everyone, AVID believes that every student deserves an equal opportunity. I once knew a young girl who was college bound by modern definition. This young lady was determined to succeed although she didn't know what success looked like, nor did she know how she was going to be successful. This young lady spent hours playing doctor, lawyer, and teacher, all by herself in the room with her dolls. That is, when her house was quiet from the usual drug addict, alcoholic, gang member, or domestic dispute. Despite the fact that this young girl was reading far below grade level, she loved to read. And she escaped into the characters' lives within her books. That young girl is me. And now I am a woman living the success that I dreamed of as a young girl. And Avid was the savior for me. I began my journey in AVID back in 1994, and I kicked and I screamed and I yelled to get out of the class. I was a seventh grader and I was extremely talkative and I was trying to find my way, so let's be honest. An elective that required note taking, tutorials, and binder checks did not seem very thrilling to me. But reluctantly, I gave it a chance and I stayed. And of course it helped that at the end of my seventh grade year, I got a $5,000 scholarship towards my college education. And that was because of AVID and its partnerships. But most importantly, in AVID, I got the basic skills that I needed to be successful, which allowed me to maintain A's and B's throughout my entire middle school and high school career. It was in AVID that I learned to be organized, it was an avid that I learned to work in groups. It was an avid that I learned it was okay to be precious. In avid, I heard my teacher say often, yes, you can, and how can I help you? And I heard it regularly through middle school, high school, and even into my senior year of college, which proved to be extremely challenging. And Mary Catherine Swanson, Ron Ottinger, Joyce Suber, and my avid teacher said to me again, precious, yes, you can, and how can we help you? In my quest to become a teacher, it's no coincidence that I landed as an AVID teacher specifically. I became a teacher not because AVID said I had to, but because AVID at an early age said, Precious, fulfill your dreams, whatever your dreams may be. German mathematician Mac Foreman stated, education seems to be in America the only commodity in which we will try to get as little as we can for our money. 
Only a teacher knows how challenging and emotionally draining teaching can be. We take our jobs way too seriously. We treat our students as if they are children of our own. And we want all of our students to want the best. In AVID, that AVID classroom is where we give our students the best. AVID is more than just a savior for our students. It is an innovative way of teaching in the 21st century. For the students who want more out of their education, AVID provides the time, the resources, and the support to make it happen. No AVID story is the same, but I'd like to share one with you to ponder throughout the week. Three years ago, I was teaching an 11th grade AVID class, zero period, and it met between seven and eight in the morning, which is a huge sacrifice for high school students. The beginning of the a year, we played a lot of getting to know you activities, and not once did it dawn on me to have the kids say what grade they were in, because I was teaching the 11th grade AVID class. But when I was going through the student profiles later in the week, I learned that I had a 10th grader in my AVID class. Very nice young woman, and she sat in the back of the classroom like a sponge and just observed everything that was going on around her. So one morning, I got to work about 30 minutes early, and she and two other young women were waiting for me. And I pulled this young lady to the side and had a conversation with her about joining the 10th grade AVID class. And she politely said to me, you know, I like you. I think you're funny. I really like your class. If you give me a chance, I promise I'll work hard. I'll work harder than any of your 11th graders. So I was new to this experience. I knew my counselor wasn't going to take her out since they were the ones that put her in. And I seen it as a challenge to take it on. No offense to the counselors, of course. <laughs> and so I took this on as a challenge. I said, okay, I can work with the curriculum for 11th graders. And a week later, I was talking to one of my colleagues. And my colleague was talking about all those students he had in middle school and how bad they were and how some of them were now at our high school. And this young lady's name came up. And I thought, no, you're mistaken. And he's like, no, I'm not. She's this and she's that and she's bad. And I said, well, I still don't believe you. And then he called two of my fellow colleagues who confirmed that, yes, indeed, she was a bad student with a bad attitude. So then my challenge increased because I had to work with an 11th grade cur curriculum, make it accessible to a 10th grader who had the potential to give me major attitude throughout the year. And then the young lady came to me one day and she said, you know, I know the teachers are saying bad things about me. And I said, well, how do you know that? And she goes, because I was really bad. And I had, a really bad, <laughs> I had a really bad attitude. And she said, but not that I'm making excuses, but there's a reason why. And that's when she began to tell me about how her father passed away when she was eight years old. And at the time that her father passed away, her mother's spirit died and she stopped being the mother to her children and she stopped being there. And so my student kind of felt neglected and she felt as if no one really cared. And her defense mechanism was to give them as much attitude as she possibly could. And so I thought to myself, I could go to the counselor and admit to the counselor that I knew the counselor made a mistake and that I needed the counselor to remove the student out of my class. But I didn't. And it proved itself to be beneficial. So she stayed in my class the whole year and re-enrolled for the following year. And I was chastised by a couple of my colleagues because they said it's redundant. She's already had your 11th grade AVID class. What would she get out of being in your 11th grade AVID class again? And I let her stay anyway. And she used her time very wisely to better her craft as a student, revising papers, challenging herself, and becoming a mentor and a tutor to her fellow peers. I'm happy to uh, announce that she just graduated uh, from my senior AVID class, and she's in the top 10 of her graduating class in high school, and she graduated with more than $65,000 in academic scholarships. <laughs> if I would have known that attitude got students to where they needed to go, I might have talked a little less than given more attitude. But I think my talking, you know, got me to, to where I needed to be. 
I had an opportunity to hear this young, resilient lady deliver a thank you speech at an award ceremony a few weeks ago, and I was choked up in tears when she announced to the audience that it was me and it was Avid that had assisted her and gotten her through her last three years of high school. And my confirmation was clear, not that I had done well, but that Avid had done well. That Avid had transformed education into a rewarding situation, not just for their students, but also for their teachers. And I was honored to, to know deep down in my heart that Avid had just done the same thing for one of my students that it had done for me. Not only can I share my story now with the rest of the world, but my students can do the same. And I had a total of 25 graduating seniors in my Avid class this year, all of which were admitted to four-year colleges. I never lead my students to believe that if you work hard, everything will be all right. Instead, I model for them that if you embrace and learn from today's challenges, you'll be better for it tomorrow. Similar to how I feel at home right now at Summer Institute, your students will feel at home in the AVID classroom. You become more than just a student to them. I've never birthed any children, but I received more Mother's Day cards this year than I have in my entire life. And that's what the AVID classroom is all about. I hope this week that you walk away with the confidence and the strategies to do everything within your power to make sure that all of our students are successful. I'm a lifelong learner, and the more I learn, the better I teach. If you're a counselor or an administrator here with us today, your job is equally as important to make sure that the teaching within the classroom is valuable. And part of that is taking AVID from one classroom in your school to a school-wide AVID program. I like to leave you with this. One of my favorite proverbs says, it takes a village to raise a child. And when I visit Summer Institute and I have the privilege of running into my middle school counselors and principals and teachers and my high school principals and counselors and teachers, I'm reminded that they had a helping hand in raising me and helping me become the woman that I am. Teachers, I know, sometimes we believe that it's not our job to raise our students because we only get paid to teach them. But the truth is, if we take our jobs as seriously as they say we do, you cannot do one without doing the other. Have a wonderful week.